Fellow Mississippian William Faulkner once said, the past is never dead, it's not even past. What I've always felt William Faulkner meant by that is that the past is never dead because we are our past. We are, we are what our ancestors taught us to be. Our grandfathers, our fathers, live in us. It lives in our actions. It lives in how we duck cunt. It lives in how we raise our own children. It lives in what we teach our children to be. As a child, I thought my granddad was taking me duck hunting. As an adult, I realized he was teaching me his traditions. Got him that second. Did you shoot that second shot at that duck? Or did I get him? I, sh I shot that Drake and he tucked his head and it started motionless, so I finished him off and I, I, I thought you had shot him, but I realized you double. I'm shaking. <laughs> that was good. That was good. If my grandfather was sitting right here today, after more like this morning, I would thank him for teaching me to be practical. I would thank him for teaching me to appreciate wild ducks. I would thank him for passing on that tradition, for instilling in me the fundamentals of duck hunting, respect for the resource, respect for the habitat, future generations. And maybe my grandfather didn't know he was doing all that. Maybe he was just sharing time with his grandson. The past is who you are. Family is everything. This, this, this is my grandmother's family plot here in Greenwood, Mississippi. It was she that gave me the old Colt hammer gun. It was probably her grandfather buried here at her feet that passed that on. Her father, two plots down. This, this, this is the family. This is the origin. This, this, this plot right here, these people are who I call my ancestors my duck hunting ancestors right here in Mississippi. It was this plot right here that it all started. Are you talking about a Mississippi thing? It's just a matter of birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> the first time I hunted with Jim ever, I can't remember if you explained the rule before or after, but the rule is we don't call the shots, you shoot, but you better hit him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I shot a jack tree top through there. They didn't say a word because I hit him. I'll, if you miss, we get on to you. <laughs> that was a pass right there. Here he come, here he come. Here he come, here he come. stopped you before. <laughs> there were so many things going through my mind. It, you know, it, it, it's, it's late January, here we are in ancient Mississippi, this old cypress break, and I'm hunting with this family heirloom shotgun. I've talked to you about for years since, since your dad broke out that gun and shared it with me, but I was wondering, when, when do I cock the hammers back, I wonder, I knew. That, that duck hooked up around us and started coming in. One of them hammers just came back, and, and the whole time he's coming right into those cool decoys of ours, Jim. I, I'm sitting there thinking, Lord, don't let me miss them. It, 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 it. I killed a million ducks. I killed ducks, but today was special because of this gun. And, it, and it's like, you know, my, my grandmother handed me this gun when I was 15 years old, and she don't even know who it belonged to. It was in the house she was born in. But I knew it was one of my ancestors. And, Wow, I, I came here this morning for one duck on Bobo break with you, Jim, and he come right in it. And mercifully, you didn't shoot first. <laughs> and thankfully, you let him work right in. Oh, close. Yeah, I had to. I, I didn't know what this gun to shoot. I don't know the pattern or anything, but uh, boy, he come right in the decoys. And 
clobbing him. And it's, just, it's like my ancestors spoke to me this morning. I, 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 I literally tapped into my, my absolute duck hunting roots this morning with a beautiful matter. And I'd have, I'd have taken a ring neck or anything else, but to get a, to get a green head on Bobo Brake, first time I fired this gun is uh, nothing short of amazing. At times I feel like I had to travel all over the world chasing ducks to relearn the traditional fundamentals of, of keeping it simple, like my granddad did. And it just brings it home. It brings it home to my childhood. It brings it home to my roots. Mississippi is who I am. It's who I am as a duck hunter. It's who I am as a human being. All right, I'm gonna put my last two bullets in. Well, I got more, I'm just saying. Last two in my pocket. This is unbelievable. Jim, every time you tell me there ain't no ducks, I show up for ducks. I'm gonna stop believing you. I missed bigger than Dallas on the first shot, though. I gotta go get more bullets. Only objective this morning was to shoot a single duck. Just, just with this, this gun. I just wanted, I just wanted to shoot a duck. I just wanted to see what it was like. But, whew, <laughs> the ancestors woke up the duck gods this morning. That only <laughs> <laughs> we achieved the goal in about 20 minutes, maybe. Yeah. And thought our hunt is made. The first duck, and and then everything else was icing, and it was just one of those days and one of those years that we shot limit. It was just incredible. One of my favorite kind of duck hunts is slow and steady, and the ducks work beautifully. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it makes a difference hunting with uh, hunting with somebody you get along with that shoots well. Growing up in the Mississippi Delta, mallards, gadwalls, wood ducks, but the world is so much bigger than your backyard. The traditional fundamentals of duck hunting don't change. It's all the same. It's duck hunting worldwide. Different food, different cultures, different scenery, different species. But it, it, it's like the further I got from home, the, the, the closer I felt to home. I, how can I articulate that any better? It, it, it's just further and further from the Mississippi Delta. Uh, you can take you can take me from the Mississippi Delta. You can't take the Mississippi Delta from me. I tried for it. God knows I tried. <laughs> Back in the good old days, my granddad shot this gun. Two and three quarter inch chambers, modified barrel. Not a choke. And he gave this gun to me in high school. It was the only gun I thought I'd ever owned. Went and got it Teflon coated so it would last a lifetime. Who, who knew the junk science of steel shot was gonna come out? Stone Cold Dead, you know, I used to think my granddad was such a good shot, and he was, but it was these old guns. You know, just, just look, look kids, two and three quarter inch chamber, no vent rib. 
What do you think about that? And you know, to me, coming out here with you, it wasn't, it wasn't about killing a pile of ducks. It was about bringing old granddad back to the duck hole. The man that brought me into this thing. And I'm talking about, I want about to let a greenhead come over to decoy and not pay rent. God, dog. That duck folded like a cheap love letter when that, when that little shot hit him. My grandfather's been dead 40 years. And I realized he's still alive in my heart. He's still alive when I shoulder the gun. He's still alive when I'm hunting with my son in old South Delta flooded timber. Just like he did. Change is a part of life. The world changes, the landscape changes, the Mississippi Delta changed. My world changed. My backyard got bigger, it changed. Old dogs grow old and die. My ancestors grew old and died. My teachers grew old and died. But their traditions don't change. Home is who you are. Life short, get done.